Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Jermaine, with another Simple Truth Update. And I come to you today with, with something that just really and truly shows you that no matter what you do, no matter what you say, there will always be some form of pushback, rejection, or even attack. The Bible says in Galatians 4.16, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Well, the answer to that question is an absolute resounding yes, especially when you deal with people, especially here in America, that have become so indoctrinated and they've become so conditioned that everything that the powers to be, the government tells them they absolutely believe. Well, what happened and what brought this all about was that I posted this picture that I saw someone else post. I reposted the picture to be more exact. And it shows, here you'll see this picture. And as you can see in this picture, it shows a cache of guns that were confiscated from private gun owners in China. And I simply made the comment, I posted the comment, and I said, when I put this picture up, I said, once the UN arms treaty takes effect, this scene will play out in America. Well, lo and behold, not too long after I posted this comment, I had a person give me a response and the person gave me the response and said that might not be such a bad thing. And I came back with, so you are welcoming of government having absolute power. And I said, wow, as you can see here, the person went on to say, yes, especially as a black American. The threat to the black American community is mainly from heavily armed right wingers who buy guns in case they have to kill us. Also, youth violence, such as what's happening in Chicago, hurts black Americans much more than government violence. Violence from local police, mun municipalities, has been overwhelmingly from handguns, not rifles. The fact that right-wing gun purchases have grown exponentially over Barack Obama's term is representative of what they feel about the black community in general. They talk about fighting the government because they perceive the government being too accommodating of non-whites. They feel white dominance is being undermined by government. If right-wingers decide to attack blacks or others who aren't conservative Christian whites, then the federal government and, mil and military are our best protection. I want to I want to point that out. I want to I want to say that again, ladies and gentlemen. The federal government and military are our best protection. Our communities are way behind the arms race against right-wingers. Civilians don't need high capacity, high caliber combat weaponry. Well, I want to make a point. When I hear things that are said to this nature, it really and truly has me wondering, what are you thinking? If we have no form of protection, whether it be handguns, whether it be rifles, whatever the case may be, which we are allowed through the Second Amendment, to be able to have, not for long it seems with this UN arms treaty, but I digress. If we are not allowed to have any type of weaponry, do you not think that this violence will continue to be perpetuated? It will probably increase. Statistics and history has shown that when a public does not have the ability to protect itself, that the violence against said public increases. Well, then there was another comment. I want to show it to you here. It says, too much paranoia about government taking guns away. Calm down. He was talking to me, Jermaine. It will never happen in the USA. 
It will never happen in the USA. It happened in Germany. It happened, it's happening in China. It has happened in Australia. It has happened in parts of England. What makes anyone believe that the United States is so untouchable when it comes to the things that are happening by the same globalist government agenda that is coming together to make said things happen? And my response to the, uh, the previous uh, comment was the federal government and the military are, are our best protection. And I put shaking my head, you need to wake up. Then the comment came back and the comment said, besides the thought of civilians fighting the government with their little rifles is hilarious to me. News flash, bruh, he was talking to me, the government already has absolute firepower. Those of you who make the argument that rifles are needed to protect themselves against government, aka military, are delusional at best. You folks think that if the military perceives a threat that they are go just going to send a squad of riflemen. False. First, they are going to count how many people there are. Then they are going to send an overwhelming number of soldiers who will be in armed vehicles and accompanied by robot planes and with bombs. These little AR-15s and such are only effective for civilian on civilian violence. This is the delusion, ladies and gentlemen. This is the conditioning. This is the indoctrination of what many American people have been thought, taught and th think to believe. They believe that our government is our friend and they are looking to help us in any way they can. Haven't they heard of the NDAA? Have they not heard of the fact that, that uh, civil liber liberties are eroding? The Constitution is almost as good as a roll of Charmin toilet paper as we live and breathe today. I, I continue. My comment at that point is where the Bible says you give one or two admonitions and then you just, you, you leave it alone. And I'm paraphrasing. And I said, I have to agree to disagree. Then this person went on and said, the Civil War, the U.S. Army fought Southerners and ultimately physically liberated black people. What is this person thinking? Desegregation. The National Guard was sent to four states to allow black people access to educational resources, which their tax dollars help fund. I'm not saying it's a perfect system, but the threat is from right-wing civilians, not government. Oh, really? <laughs> My gosh, can you be any more dumbed down, docile, demoralized, and, and just ignorant? Well, the Bible also says if a man, uh, if a man wants to be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And the other person that responded to me made a comment and he said, you guys must think we live in China. Are, are you militia members? Makes me wonder right there, that kind of question. Are you on Facebook as an agent for the CIA? Never heard such crazy talk about civilians fighting military. Where did you dream this? Well, first and foremost, I never mentioned anything about civilians uprising and forcefully trying to overtake the government. I never mentioned anything of that nature. It just shows you the tangent that many people will take with their conditioned mind thinking, their fluoride-induced thinking. Then this person says about me, that's Jermaine talking about his fear of government having a monopoly of force. Government having a monopoly of force? I don't believe that's a fear, nor do I believe that's a farce. That's truth. Well, I, I went on to say to the previous comment, I said, I never said anything about militia. I was sharing info about the UN Arms Treaty. And then to the person that accused me of being fearful, I made sure that I made a point 
where I said to him, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no fear here. I just stated a fact about the UN arms treaty and the resulting actions once it is implemented. No fear here, just fact. Ladies and gentlemen, the simple truth of the matter is, is that this is the type of thinking that many Americans have. That's why they will be easily ushered into FEMA camps once America begins its process to enact the NDAA in the way that it chooses to do. Do I fear the government? Do I hate the government? No. Am I trying to keep people aware of what's going on through the simple truth to know so that they can be prepared? An absolute resounding yes. But I want to share with you this last video clip of what happens when you or anyone is perceived to be against what the elite global agenda, i.e. our federal government, what they do to people who do not want to just simply, as the other respondents in this post are doing, which is just bow down and give in, when you speak up and you stand up, this is what happens. But when the president can kill whoever he wants, then he's not a president anymore, he's a king. To start assassinating American citizens without charges, we should think very seriously about this. There aren't even any charges filed against him other than what the president's people have publicly said about him. Can we just say that because of what we think he said to somebody in a foreign country, he's lost his right to life and American agents can just kill him? If the American people accept this blindly and casually, that we now have an accepted practice of the president assassinating people who he thinks are bad guys, I think it's sad. I strongly object to the president institutionalizing a policy that explicitly says that he has the authority to target American citizens because he believes they're bad people. You don't protect bad people because they deserve it. You protect bad people and go through the process because you think a lot about innocent American people never being treated in this manner. This is something that is... It, this is major in many ways about following the rule of law. I can remember here at Fox arguing in the hypothetical whether or not the president could order an American killed, and everybody was recoiled at even the thought of it. Now it doesn't even make the front pages. What about the Constitution? What about life, liberty, and property? What about the very obligations imposed on the government in the document that created the government itself? It's pretty amazing how, for whatever reason, the executive branch can institute a kill order and have anyone they choose killed. This just proves that absolute power corrupts absolutely. This has been the simple truth. And as I always tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is the simple things that are the most profound, but yet they are the most difficult to put into practice and to actually do. Wake up, people. This has been Jermaine with The Simple Truth, and I'll see you again real soon.